Elko, but these are two section front runners right now. One of them's running away with theirs. The other one's got a two-game lead trying to hang on to it. This ought to be a pretty good crossover here tonight between these two top teams in their respective sections. Yes, this, this is like a, a, almost like a playoff game because both these guys, both these teams are going to be heading both the district playoffs and the LL League playoffs the way it looks. And con contrasting styles. So it'll be interesting to see. Got a little more size on Elko. We got the speed and the shooting of LS. Elko, uh, we'll start with them quick. Do you Have you seen anything from them? Are you surprised that they've been able to pick up right where they left off a season ago? I mean, obviously, Braden Bohannon was a, a huge plug for this team a season ago, but they've had some graduation losses. But the program really was in good shape when he left, and Brad Connors has been able to keep this, this thing going for another season. No, Brad Connors has done a great job. They, they, they find ways to win, and now they're going to do it with uh, some inside strength. And they're doing it with their defense, only giving up 40 points a game. Yeah, they certainly are. LS, we know about them. Their firepower has been off the charts this season. Along with Columbia, one of the only other undefeated teams in the entire LL. 113 three-pointers this season. Balance across their starting five. It starts with Ty Burton, but really the guys like Berkeley Wagner and Ben Wirt, they have been providing very good scoring punch for this team. And this is one of the most potent offenses we'll see in the entire league. Well, it's amazing. They have, 100, you know, I think, 111 threes made on the year. They're shooting... Uh, they have twice as many threes almost than, than Elko does. And uh, bo both of these teams are shooting about 67, 68% from the foul line, which is one of the better ones that we've seen all year. Tonight's crossover matchup is brought to you by Sable McKinney for all your real estate needs. If you're looking for a real estate agent, call Sable McKinney. Let her help you sell your home. Schedule your appointment today, 717-715-715. 7984. Also brought to you by Hannah Spiro State Farm Insurance, located in Lebanon County. Our mission is to enhance the quality of life for others through the offering of insurance and financial services products and providing outstanding customer service to show our appreciation to them. Call Hannah for quotes today at 717 274 3822. Starting lineups for both sides tonight. Senior night here at LS. We'll see if they switch any of the lineup out. But it is the usual five that we've been used to seeing all season long and really going back to last year. Luca Vranick, Berkeley Wagner, Ty Burton, Isaiah Perido, and Ben Wirt will round out the starting five for LS. And again, LS, 113 three-pointers made this season. All the offense. Their free throw shooting is good. Their defense is good. We saw them earlier against Mannheim Central. And much like... Columbia, they're a little more controlled than Columbia, where Columbia is more relentless and they just go and go and go. This LS team has kind of that same potency, but there's a lot more control with them when we watch them. Yeah, they, they, they'll execute some things on offense, and, and I don't think they get as many deflections as Columbia does. When the, Columbia gets those deflections, they're off to the races. And I think LS works on good, solid uh, defense, get the rebound, run the fast break, and then execute some things on offense. This Elko team in uh, Section 4, they have a two-game lead over, and uh, they will tangle with Catholic coming up at the end of the season. They've already got a one-game win, uh, one-game lead over them by way of beating them by two earlier this month. They have a tricky schedule coming up, though. After tonight, Octorera on the schedule, Pottsville non-conference, and then they're going to play Why I'm Missing and Lancaster Catholic to round things out. So the section could come down to February 8th, possibly, if somewhere along the line, Lancaster Catholic can somehow steal two games and get two losses by this Elko team within conference or within a division play. So we'll see what happens there. But there's a lot to be done yet here over the next month or so. And obviously the LL tournament looms large coming up in about a month. For LS, undefeated tonight, Elko. Then they got Muhlenberg. They got the rematch with Mannheim Central coming up. Really tricky game a week from tomorrow against E-Town. That'll be a very, very good game. And then Bishop McDevitt on February 5th. And that could really be a possible playoff winning, you know, McDevitt needing that game to win to help boost any of their chances. But their schedule a little tougher as the season goes on. Yeah, and that's a good design by Coach Berryman to try to crank it up as you get into February because uh, you, you plan this playoff game. So you need to have that competition. Starting five for Elko tonight, Dallas George, Cole Thomas, Luke Williams, Reese Shuey and Corey Ativo. Ativo averaging 15.3 a game. Williams at 12.1. Shuey at 10 a game. And uh, those three have made up the majority of the three-pointers made. As Coach mentioned, it's uh, a team that has only hit 53 threes compared to the 111. Remember this Elko team a couple years ago, they were throwing threes right and left yeah. up, and they were draining them too. So this is a vastly different style 
than what they're used to be. Uh, we've used to see here with this Elko team. We're going to take time here to listen to tonight's national anthem, then we'll tip things off here from LS. We're glad to have you along here on LLHoops.com for this crossover matchup. Elko and LS here tonight from LS High School. We're glad to have you along wherever you may be watching this game tonight. Thanks for tuning in to LLHoops.com for this crossover. And uh, just to let you know, our upcoming schedule after tonight, next Friday we are at Garden Spot for their matchup with Cacalico. February 4th we have McCaskey at Cedarcrest. And then the week after, two weeks after that, about 10 days after that, will be the start of the LL tournament. So... We uh, may have some games for you coming up in the LL tournament. Tonight's game is also brought to you by Busgen Davis Law Offices with over 60 years of service and serving Lebanon, Lancaster, Berks, and Dauphin counties. You can count on the attorneys of Busgen Davis Law Offices. Lebanon's most experienced legal team can help you in all areas of the law, including personal injury, family law, commercial and business representation, estate planning and administration, and simpler complex real estate transactions. It'll be a TiVo and Wart to jump things for the respective sides, Elko and the Navy. LS in the white, the tap out of bounds, and we will do it. Actually, we're going to go with Elko here. The arrow is going to favor the Raiders to start things, so they will get it off the inbound. Dallas George, number 13. Again, it's George, Thomas, Williams, Shuey, and Atibo for Elko. LS playing man-to-man. -man. George. Up top it is Williams, second leading scorer on this team. Thomas, very patient to start things. A Tebow up top. You won't miss him tonight, number 44. Open look to start things for Williams. No, there is a Tebow right away, yeah, and he got it, it. and the foul. Well, they had it boxed out, but he's just uh, big enough to get over top and get in the rebound and put it back in. And he's been in a foul line 67 times, so he get he's a pretty good foul shooter. Also will step out and hit the three-pointer, too. He has 11 of them this season. You know, and we saw this LS team against Mannheim Central earlier this season. Now, Central's not the biggest team either. So in that game, the size was not necessarily a factor. Right. That is certainly going to be the case here tonight in Elko's favor with Ativo as long as he's on the floor. Yeah, and you can see that first possession. Elko took their time to work it around. They had a number of different guys posting up, trying to get the ball inside. Tebow misses the first, the only one there, and Wart's going to get the rebound. So it's Vranick, Wagner, Burton, Perido, and Wart for LS. Keep an eye on Burton because he can score in buckets. And as we have said before, range pretty much from the parking lot if he wants it. Perido, nice find underneath with Vranick, and he lays it in. Yeah, but that's, that's LS right there, just working the ball around and uh, finding the open man. Very unselfish play. Two apiece as we're almost two minutes into this first quarter from LS. Corner three-pointer on the way. Clangs off the iron and Burton skies for the rebound. Burton up ahead. Finds his running mate and his Perido no in the rebound, Williams. Yep, he had a good look off the fast break and just shot it a little bit long. Now, Elko's running a two-post man, high-low, and then they got a back door Beautiful. and a dish. Beautiful play. Yep. Well, what happened with the post guys, you have three guys on the perimeter with great spacing, and that time uh, Strasburg fell asleep, LS fell asleep, and they got a back door layup for a dish 
the postman. Wagner off balance. Tough angle, and Atiba gets another rebound. It's been a very, we said it, guard-oriented offense for Elko in the past as they'll fire the three, and knocking that down is Cole Thomas. Elko jumps in front by five with 5.55 yep. to go in the quarter. Nice hedge there by Ativo off the ball screen. War with a head fake, step through move, and he traveled. Yep, he went in that time, and right there was Ativo waiting for him in the paint on the help side. And again, this Elko team was so guard oriented just a couple of years ago. Remember, they had that great team that made a nice run. Very guard heavy, so Brad Connors knows what he's doing with that position. He would almost prefer if you have three, four guards and then maybe one big as they go right inside, they switch roles there. It's Williams can't connect, Parado the rebound. Well, they got a good shot inside. It was not an easy shot, but it a, they'll take that any time. They missed it. Wagner hesitated for a minute, but he knocks down the three. Seven to five, Elko early on. Almost halfway through this first quarter. As going all the way to the bucket is George off balance, and that's going to go back over to LS with 5.07 to go in the quarter. Is it tough when you are a team like Elko, is it tough to drag a team like LS into the half court, or do you think LS is more well, of a half court style team? I think they can play, uh, they can run the fast break and they can run their half court, and that's what they did right there. He got a really good shot, missed it. Yeah, we're but, in and out. But, uh, you know, LS can play half court if they have to. Just a shade too late there, and then Cole Thomas is going to get called for the foul. That'll be the first on either side with 4.42 to go in the first. And we got a pretty good start here at 7-5. to five. You know, what LS, you know, don't get layups off penetration. They're not going to throw it to a post guy in there. And they'll get, uh, they'll get some three-point shots on their screening game and also penetration and kicks. Burton with the head fake, and he'll take off from the foul line. Atibo misjudged that, but Elko gets the board anyway. Shuey. Williams open. Off mark that time as Perido gets the rebound. Granick, Perido. Perido has it stripped. Good defense by Elko as Wart gets free. And look at the help defense that time by Shuey to strip that. Yeah, good job by Shuey coming down to try to take away that layup because Wart, Wart was on his way to, to get a layup shot. Let's see what they do with the out-of-bounds play. Bob into Vranick and then Ward up top. They yeah. go right back underneath yeah. to Wagner and he can't connect. Yeah, a little flex cut on the back screen. Down the other way, George gets it off to Ativo, and again, he will shoot those threes yeah. as Burton gets the rebound. Burton one on three, pull up jumper on the way, no, and the rebound again. Ativo got there a little early, so Vranick holds it in, and Ward's open for three, yeah, and he see, knocks it down. And that's what Vranick does. He just. Found that rebound. He was in traffic. He looked to find a three-point shooter, and there he was. 8-7 right. Pioneers with 3.17 to go. The lob into a Tebow, and there's the big guy using his size. Yeah, he's, he's really good down there. He got fronted, and he waited for the ball to reverse, and then he sealed his guy, and they threw it over top in, into a Tebow. Got a stoppage here by the officials. Well, I think Brad Connors wanted to take a timeout, and I think they uh, wouldn't let him do it because they felt like uh, LS got the ball inbounds. Burton with his team trailing by a point. Three minutes to go in the first quarter. Wagner penetrate, kick, Parado open three, in and yep. out again. Should be the rebound. Yep, pretty good look at time. Cole Thomas finds Shu uh, Williams and then Shuey yep. back to Williams. Shuey puts it on the floor and he'll get called for the charge. First foul on Shuey and that is the second on Elko. Yeah, Vranik again takes a defensive charge. He's a, an outstanding defensive player 
And that time he got his feet right in good position to take the charge. Let's see if uh, LS runs a little set here. Foul away from the ball. It's going to be on Elko again, and I believe that is on Luke Williams. Yep. First on Williams, third on Elko with 2.30 to go in the first quarter. Burton, oh, he shook loose the defender, and he drains yeah, that, the jumper. That, that is hard to stop. He's got it going to the right, and he crosses it over and step back, and it's a mid-range jumper. George was right with him, but that lightning quick by Ty Burton to create his own shot. Just a ball handling maneuver to, to cross it over and then step back creates that space where he could pull the shot off. Thomas for three, no, and Burton gets bumped from yep. behind by yep. Williams. That'll be Luke's second foul and the fourth on Elko. Yep, and that's that's a factor. So Brad Connors is going to go to Cam Marquette off the bench. Yeah, Luke Williams, their second leading scorer, and he does a nice job in the high-low with the TiVo. We'll see if uh, Marquette can move into the post and do some high-low with the TiVo if they change their offensive style with uh, Luke Williams out. 150 to go. Burton penetrate. Try to throw it across the lane. Now they find Wirt open again. He knocks down another one. Yeah, this very confident shooting is Wirt. And so uh, the whole LS team is very confident shooting because the most important thing is they get good shots through their teamwork. 22nd three-pointer on the season for Wirt. Marquette. And that one's off the side of the rim and out of bounds. It'll stay with Elko with 126 to go in the quarter. And switch that around, and LS will get it back with 126 to go. After being down 7-2, LS has come on strong, haven't they? 11 to 2 run here over the last three minutes or so. Deep three by Burton, and why would you think it's anything but good? <laughs> well, if you watch warm ups, he was practicing them, practicing those shots from out there, and then the, his defender was so worried about the dribble drive penetrate, he just pulled up and hit the long one. 14 to 2 run for LS with 112 to go in the first quarter, and Burton's got a pair of buckets. He has five on the night. Again, tonight's game is brought to you by Sable McKinney for all your real estate needs. Looking for a real estate agent? Call Sable McKinney. Let her help you sell your home. Schedule your appointment today at 717-715-7984. Again, next Friday night we'll be at Garden Spot, Cacalico and Garden Spot. Might as well book a hotel room if you're me anyway. That's a long trip. <laughs> it's a long trip. So Spot and Cacalco next Friday, and then McCaskey and Cedarcrest, which is always, regardless of record, a great game in Section 1. I've been there at the cage before to see some buzzer beaters between those two. That is always a fun matchup when those two get together, and that will be in two weeks. Up top it is George and then Marquette. And they try to feed inside to a TiVo, and that was cut off nicely, but there's a foul yeah. on the floor. Yeah, that – well, with uh, Luke Williams out, Elko's now gone to four round one. So instead of having two post guys in there screen for each other, a TiVo's just trying to position himself around the four perimeter guys. Second foul on LS. It was on Wart, and that's his first. Up top to it. That's the other benefit to having the size. You can go up top on those inbounds yep. to the big guy too. George in the corner, under a minute to go in the first. 16-9, LS with the lead. 14-2 run during yeah. this middle part of this first quarter to this point. Marquette. This defense. Yeah, it's a wrestling match down there in the low post. It really is with Wart and yep. Atibo. They are hammering each other yeah, in the paint. The refs just letting it go. Now the double team. Those two are all over yeah. each other yeah. in the paint. And they are going to get Ben Wart for another foul. Yeah, well. I mean, both guys are in there trying to establish the position, so referee had to call something. Ed Berryman's going to leave Wart on the floor with 16 seconds to go in the quarter, and they go right at him, but George is able to get the bucket. Yeah, nice penetrating scoop shot. 
Wagner with four seconds. They got to hustle. Vranick finds Parado, fires the three at the buzzer, and that's off the mark. Well, a quick start for Elko, but it was all LS from that point on as they put together a 14-2 run, and they take a 16-11 lead after one. You're watching live coverage of this crossover matchup here in LLHoops.com. Tonight's game is brought to you by Hannah Spiroff State Farm Insurance, located in Lebanon County. Our mission is to enhance the quality of life for others through the offering of insurance and financial service products and providing outstanding customer service to show our appreciation to them. Call Hannah for quotes, 717, 717-274-3822. 16-11. Elko and LS, and uh, that first quarter, I mean, you know, Wirt's got two fouls, but he's got six points. Burton's got five. Quick start for Elko, but LS showing their firepower. Yeah, they were down 7-2 and just sort of stayed with their plan, played some defense, executed their offense, had some nice unselfish plays where they found the open man, and that's been the M.O. for them all season. Trying to stay unbeaten at 13-0. They're 8-0 in the section. They have essentially stamped Section 3. It's going to take an effort to wrestle that away from them. And you say that you, it, you're getting safer to say that now because we're coming right. up on three weeks or so until the season's over. So no, You definitely have established the top teams so far in the league. Uh, there's a number of teams that can win this league. It's sort of wide open. We'll take a look at the section standings coming up at the half as – LS has it to start things. Wagner's jumper on the way is off the mark, and a Tebow will work. Tangle up. It's Frannick who comes away with it. Off to Paradone. He traveled. Yep. yep. 23 seconds into this second quarter. It's still a five-point lead. Is Elko's going to bring in Cody Boyer, number 10. Cam Marquette will take a seat. So let's see what Coach Berryman does. If uh, he has Wirt with two fouls, he's going to take Wirt off of Otivo. He's going to put Wagner on. They're trying to front him and getting some help side. Good jumper and a clean look by George who knocks down the corner three. And George is going to have some open shots out there with all the attention that the LS defense has given to Otivo. Now Elko's gone into a 2-3 zone. Wart open again, and he knocks another one down. His third Wirt, three of the night. Against a 2-3 zone, they just reversed the ball. Wart ran the short corner and then stepped out to the corner. He ran the long corner on the reverse, and he was wide open. Elko goes back to George in the corner, but he pulls it out this time with 6.48 to go in the half. And we get a foul away from the ball again, yeah. and that's going to be on Perido. When you front the post, like LS is determined to front the post, there's going to be some foul calls because Ativo is trying to seal you off, and they're just going to—they're just going to call some fouls. That's just the way it's going to be. I think Ed Berryman's a little unhappy with that he's call. A, yeah, he's unhappy with that call. He's because he's trying to set the tone that we can front the post. And right now, Ativo's backing in a little bit. He's playing like a postman should. He's trying to establish his position. Corner wide open again is George. That one's short. And then flying in is Shuey from the backside to lay it up and in. And they're really helping off of George right now into the post. And that's why he had two wide open shots. 19-16. So now down to three. Burton deep three on the way. No. And a one-handed rebound by Shuey. As they'll slow things down here and hand it off to George as we come up on six minutes to go in the half. Good one here tonight at LS in this first half. Elko hot start. LS a 14-2 run. And yep. Tivo yep. is going to get called for the offensive foul. And you're going to get that too. <laughs> so Eddie Berryman, he worked for that call. because, uh, uh, And I think that was the right call in that particular moment. Little negotiation over there you're saying. Yes. <laughs> Brad Connors talking to the official now. Yeah. It, it, it's... You're going to call something every time down from what I've seen. And when you let them play like that, it, there's going to be a lot of physical contact. Brannick inside on Ativo, and Ativo's going to get called for a second quick one. Oh, my. So you got Wirt and Ativo both with two. And both, by the way, are still yeah. out there. 
Yeah, see, that, that particular one, uh, you know, Batibo's 6'7". He's allowed to block a shot. To me, that looked like a, a clean block. Because, the, the, you know, Veranic was a little bit off I balance on you. that shot. Yeah, I agree with you. And, like, my whole thing is if the guy's 6'7", and he goes straight up, and he, he's allowed to block a shot. Where's he supposed to go? So don't say he got to use his body. No, no, he, he that was a good play. Don't. So that, that time it didn't work for the – that was a big uh, moment for, for Elko to have a bad call go against him. Vranick made both, so it's a five-point lead for LS again. Williams inside. Good find of Shuey who lays it in. Well, you can see that Elko has is well-schooled on the post game. That was the – they have two guys now playing the post. They're back to their high-low post game, and they went high-low pass that time. Chase Smucker, number four, is in the game for LS. So they work it around the dial. Wirt and Burton. Wagner open three. That was partially tipped by Shuey, but right there is Vranick to put it back Vranick in. Vranick has his third offensive rebound. That time he finished. The other two times he threw it out for three balls. Lob pass inside, tipped by Wirt, right into the hands of Smucker. Here comes Burton for LS. Yeah, good help side by Wirt. The pull time. up by Burton, no, and the rebound is loose. And we got a lot of contact underneath. And bodies flying everywhere for both sides. Atibo is coming back in, by the way, right away. Brad Connors is. Ed Berryman's gotten away with Wirt being out there with two fouls. Yeah. And it's been a physical game, so why can't Brad Connors get away? But he he's, might as well bring well, the he's playing zone on defense right now, so that should help. And now Tivo just has to keep his composure on offense. 4.37 to go in the first half. Tivo out top. Boyer. Constant movement by this Elko offense. They try to post up Tivo on Wagner. Right now they're just playing a really nice high-low with... Uh, Williams and Otivo working the high-low, uh, you know, screening each other, staying apart from each other, and the three perimeter guys are just standing out of their way. tivo has got to be careful because he has yeah. pushed off a couple of times that it's gone unnoticed yeah. and a jump ball and a yeah. tie-up. And how about Wirt stepping over there to cause the tie-up? Well, LS has done a great job with their help side. Now, they're going to give up a three or two by playing that far off of the guy on the help side, but... They're definitely going to have a double team on Atibo when he gets the ball at the mid post. Luke Hines is in the game for LS, number 33. And off the inbound, there is Hines right away. Steps in front of the pass and picks it off. Here comes Vranick. Vranick quickly to Burton. Burton penetrates, kicks. Vranick back to Smucker. 3.50 to go in the half. Reverse layup by Vranick's no good. There is Hines with the putback and good. Yeah. Come off the bench, force a turnover, and get a bucket right away for Hines. Well, Hines is in there to play defense. He gives him another strong body in there, and he just finished that really nice using his left hand. George in the corner. He is camped out there in the first half. Open his Boyer three-pointer. Yes. It's a big shot. Cody Boyer brings his team within four with 3-12 to play in the first half. Smucker, entry to Vranick, out to Hines. And good ball movement here by LS. You really see the attention that they pay to Burton as soon as he gets the ball in his hands, and that's why, because he can shoot it from anywhere. Missed that one, Vranick flies in there, can't connect. Rebound tipped up. Vranick again tips it up and in. Vranick had, that would be his fifth offensive rebound. Okay, that would be his fifth offensive rebound, the tip. 27-21 with 2.35 to go in the half. Can I get a foul on LS? Is that on work? Nope, that is on Hines. So LS is showing their depth right now. They, they have some guys coming off the bench that do a great job. Ed Berryman's going to call a full timeout with 2.35 to go in the half. Tonight's live stream is brought to you by Stephen Grosh Law Office. When courtroom experience and advocacy matters, we stand by you in your time of need, probably serving Lancaster County for 15 years. 
Eric Thomas and Warren Goodling with you here at LS High School as we got a crossover matchup here tonight. 27-21 LS in front of Elko right now. And this has been a pretty good back and forth. Seen some fouls, seen some good plays, seen some big shots. About what we expected for a first half. And, and we've seen Elko just go back to the high-low post game. It's been really interesting watching that because you don't see a lot of that these days. And they do a great job uh, with their spacing and trying to get the ball inside. Now, LS, they're prepared. They're, they have good help side defense, and they're double teaming the post guy. But they, Elko, I really like the, the way they're, their scheme and how they're trying to get the, big, the ball inside to the big guys. These are two teams from the LL that are certainly going to be in the mix for the district tournament. And LS especially, they are going to be one of the front runners for the, in the power ratings. We'll talk about those a little bit at halftime as well. Getting close. It is coming up on us here, these playoffs and it's going to be nice to have a full complement of playoffs this season too. Last year's district tournament was fun with the only the champ going on to the state tournament but once you get to that state tournament and it's only champs it's one and done anyway so it kind of took a little bit away from the state tournament but it was good enough for the district tournament. Brandon gets the rebound there he's working on a double double there's Wart open for three again and he Can't drains another open. one. Brannick Plays every position. He rebounds, and then he brings the ball down and finds the open man gets the assist. 12 for Wirt and all of them by way of three. But they do a great job of finding him. They really do. Inside, and he steps over defensively, and then Smucker sticks his hand up there to swat it away from Shuey. little danger time here for Elko, down nine with 150 yeah, they, they to go in the half. they don't want this to go any deeper than that. Ativo trying to position himself inside. Hines doing a good job to deny him. George. And Tivo as we come up on 90 seconds to go in the half. George again. Shuey, they reverse it. Thomas, lob yeah, inside, looking inside for Williams. Yeah, just too much help side. They're well schooled on that. Frantic the other way, finds Burton, passed up the three, floater no, and a Tebow the rebound. Sixty seconds to go in the first half. It's a nine-point lead for the Pioneers. Oh, yeah. denial back door, Smucker. Yeah, they saw that in the scouting report. That was a little late developing, yep. too. Wart open again. Does he have another one? He sure does. Well, he has a forward guard in him, and he's bringing him way around for the basket. And that time, he was sort of covered, but his confidence level is so high right now. Fifth three of the half for Ben Wart. Remember, he's playing with two fouls as well. It's 33-21 LS. Burton, and oh, that stayed right on the sideline for a moment, but couldn't get over there to get it, so Elko's going to keep possession here with 22.5 to play in the half. Boy, Elko could sure use a bucket here to close things. Get this back into single digits if they could hit a three. Look at the denial by Burton. Solid defense. The, the team defense by LS is really, really, oh. really good. And a hard screen by Williams. George tied up, and he's going to get fouled by, I believe, Vranick. It is Vranick. That's the seventh team foul in the half as Cam Marquette and Cody Boyer come back in for Elko. They'll get a Tebow out with 2.4. You don't need to have him pick up a ticky no. tack late in the half, and then Tim Holmes will also come in for LS in place of Ward. So good job by both coaches to get yep. the bigs out. That way there's no ticky-tack foul on the Absolutely. rebound attempt. Yep. Smart coaching by Berryman yep. and Connors. 
Dallas George to attempt the one and one. It's been a well played first half by both LS, just with Wart. The difference right now with the. Wait, the three balls, yeah. the difference. Yep, absolutely. George hits both. LS with one chance. Burton fires and almost banked that in from half court. Good first half here from LS High School as the Pioneers have a 10 point lead over Elko, 33 to 23. Tonight's live stream is brought to you by Sable McKinney for all your real estate needs. If you're looking for a real estate agent, call Sable McKinney. Let her help you sell your home. Schedule your appointment today, 717-715-7984. We will take a timeout and add up the stats, come on back and talk a little bit about that first half with you. Elko and LS, it's the Pioneers with a 10-point lead. You're watching live coverage of this one tonight on LLHoops.com. Good, how are you? Oh. Good to see you. How are yeah, good, good. Can't, can't yeah. complain, can't complain. I don't know. I Whenever you guys are ready, don't matter me. Well, you guys got a nice seat up here. We do. Yeah, I do like coming here. <laughs> 12. Wow. Uh, 10, 13. It's pretty balanced all around. 23, 11, 16. Oh, geez, work. 31 to, yeah, he's shooting the threes. Yeah. We saw a little of that a couple weeks ago. And right, we'll just take a couple minutes here. And <clears throat> just, like, wait till, like, seven minutes or something like that. I need to get a little break. Halftime here at LS High School. It is the Pioneers with a 33-23 lead over Elko. We'll add up the final of the uh, halftime stats for you here in a moment. We're joined by Chris George, a head coach of Northern Lebanon. Thanks for taking a couple minutes here tonight. Hey. Appreciate that. No problem. Thanks yeah. for having me. Absolutely. What did you see in that first half there? Obviously, you're here doing a little bit of work. But <laughs> yeah, trying to enjoy the game. My son's playing, but uh, getting a little scout in there on, on both these guys. Uh, we, did, we already played LS a couple weeks ago, and they – they did what they're doing tonight. They lit us up. I think it was 15 threes in the first half. Um, but, you know, overall, early, I, I think Elko was playing the kind of game they wanted to play. I think the pace has favored Elko. You know, the score right now, obviously, they, they hit a couple threes to stretch it. You know, I, obviously, they need to stay connected a little bit more than 10. You know, if they can keep it within four or five, get to the fourth quarter, anything can happen, obviously. You surprised at all. I, we remarked during the game there. I mean, they let Wart and Ativo both play for a big stretch there with the two fouls. Yeah. It's, it's like watching 
Hogan and Andre at WrestleMania <laughs> three down there with those guys. They're yeah. going at it all night long when they're in the paint. No doubt. And, you know, both teams know the deal. You know what Elka wants. They, they want to get it inside. They want to get a Tebow and Williams the ball. And they, they've been patient. Um, but obviously LS knows that too. And they're going to they're gonna throw a bunch of bodies at a Tebow and Luke. And um, it's going to get physical probably. I think the refs have done a decent job. But like you said, the there's times they let them play, then there's other times they're, they're calling some stuff. But that's kind of how it goes. You know, it's it, – I, I can't I, – I, I wouldn't say it's an easy game to officiate down there for sure. Right. Let's, I, how difficult is it when you have to watch your son uh, is <laughs> with another team and it's one of your biggest rivals? Sure. And you're in the same county and, you know, obviously you're like, you get an off night here tonight so you're able to come over and watch it. But has that been tough? Like with, you know – you guys kind of like <laughs> no, I, I, you I'm share secrets or anything <laughs> no. little intels or insider trading hey, going I, on i've told him you got to be loyal to your team anything <laughs> you know about us you, you're welcome to use um and obviously i get to a lot of his games so i, I have elko scouted pretty well i don't need to watch a lot of film but uh it's fun you know I, I tell people a lot of times like when we played the players play they're out there shooting making baskets running around i'm just some old guy on the side <laughs> yelling um it <laughs> You know, we've played a few times now. Um, ironically, he's played really well in those three games. Hmm. So it's always <laughs> that, that double-edged sword of, you know, I, the last time we, we were tied, I think, halfway through the third and earlier this year, and then he hit like four threes in four minutes that basically ended the game, and that was kind of a weird. You talked to him after that? <laughs> we shook hands at the end. That was it. But, you know, I talked to Connors, Coach Connors, after the game, and even he said, man, that's got to be a little tough. And, you know, I, during the game, you're just coaching. You know, you're coaching your kids. Those are my guys. You know, I, the, first and foremost, those are the, the guys that I, you know, bleed and sweat with every day of practice. So, um, but no, it, it it's a little unique. Obviously, maybe it's if you can find that example happening somewhere else. I'm sure Doc Rivers coaches against his kid in the mm -hmm. NBA, and and you have some of that. But um, in a weird way, I, you know, I think he's happy. Uh, my older son, I actually, I used to be an assistant at Elko and helped when he came through and. And it, it went really well, but at the same time, I'm sure there were there were days. You know, he's a teenager. Same with with my younger one, Dallas. Where, hey, I what, what's my dad doing here? You know, maybe I'd rather be a part. So it's it's kind of nice in a way, sitting in the stands and and watching and not being over there. Although I've I've said to to Brad Connors, sometimes when I'm sitting here, I think I'd rather be coaching. It's it's a little more nerve wracking as a parent over in the stands. You can't control anything, and yep. you know. So you guys are four and nine. You just beat Garden Spot uh, the other night. Nice win by you there, 51-42. Yep. Uh, where's your team at right now? I mean, obviously you can look at records, you can look at the standings and stuff, but, I mean, just, you know, day to day, where are you right now? How have you guys been handling everything going on? There's a lot of this stuff off the court sure. with school and yeah. things, you know, all that stuff. What's it been like going through this uh, year two of a, of a pandemic and coaching and trying to keep things on the straight and narrow, but then also, like, where you guys are right now as far as a team and how do you think you guys have done so far halfway through? Sure. Um, so we lost our Solanco game last night to some COVID issues from on their side. Um, and, you know, obviously that's a challenge. You know, every game or every week you go into, you never know. We've had a bunch of kids in and out of the lineup, same kind of thing. And we're not very deep, so it's hard for us to deal with that. But uh, I have a great group of kids. You know, we lost 10 seniors from last year's team. We were, we were pretty good, pretty talented. Um, we're just trying to fill some of those holes, and I think it's taken a while. You know, we were probably expecting a little too much from our, our new guys, but they're, I think they're starting to find their way. And even as coaches, we're trying to figure out it's a, it's a, it's a different mix. we got some young guys. we got a couple of guys in Simon Grimes and Peyton Wolf who are, you know, argu arguably two of the best players in the section that we're trying to fit into the whole mix. We had a, uh, we had a couple tough losses where, you know, I, I really think we're a 500 team, but obviously, you know, with four wins, we got to get it going. We, we play Anvil tomorrow hoping to get back in the win column again. And then uh, Catholics coming our way on Tuesday. We played them fairly tough at their place. So, you know, we're, we're probably not looking at playoffs anymore. We're still alive. We're not eliminated. Uh, but it's definitely one of those things where we're just going to go game by game and, and play it hard. And that being said, I like where we're at. Our kids are fighting. Our older guys could, could, could have easily packed it in as we're, we didn't get off to a good start and, and start worrying about their stats and themselves, and they haven't done that. It's, it's an awesome group with a great culture. You guys, uh, this is the last thing I'll ask you, your section might be, is not necessarily in terms of record, but, I mean, you have Octorera, you have yep. Donegal, you have teams that are fighting to stay alive. Yep. You have Elko, and you obviously have Catholic who – you know, maybe a little step back from last year, what, we're, what we've been used to the last couple of years. But 
it seems like there's a lot of balance, and those are fights like every night. Maybe the only other section like that would be section one at this point where there's no clear-cut favorites. Sure. So it's got to be the grind in your section's got to be – as good as it's ever been, I guess, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. it's as tough as it's ever been. Yeah, no doubt. And the way they have the, the schedule now, with the they had switched it around. You know, we played everyone early when we got our non-leagues out of the way, and then we're going to finish again going back to that almost like an NFL style. Mm -hmm. uh, so at the end here, we're going to see everybody back in the section, and which I kind of like. It gives you a chance to, hey, go make your changes, go grow as a team, and then reassess now that you play these same teams a second time. And, and all you can hope, you know, I've told my kids, I don't focus too much on the scoreboard. Let's just let's just be better every game, yeah. and I think we've done that. So, and yeah, the, the section's tough. Donegal is has has been awesome. And what they did to Mannheim the other night, um, but I'm not surprised. You know, Coach Dolan always has them ready to play. They're a gritty, uh, feisty bunch, very physical, and 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 they're going to be a tough out for everybody. I think they're sitting right around there, 500 too. Good luck to you the rest of the way. Thanks, Richard Thomas. Thanks for yep, yep. Thanks, Thanks for, for having taking me. taking a couple minutes tonight. That's Chris George, head coach of Northern Lebanon. Good luck to him. Good luck to his son Dallas here the rest of the way. He's on the floor there for Elka, number 13. As we start the second half, it'll be LS Ball. Scores in the first half led. Dallas George led Elka with seven. And Ben Wart with 15 for LS. And the Pioneers will start things here with it. Vranick, who had a good first half on the boards. It is the starting five for each side. So you've got uh, Ativo and Wart that are both out there, both playing with the two fouls. And they've been locked up in a tight match all night between those two when they're guarding each other as Burton gets loose and the foul line jumper just short as Dallas George gets the rebound. What did you see in that first half, Coach, with the, the two sides? I mean, obviously, Wart, the big difference with the threes, but Elko, you know, they, they hung tough. They yeah, played pretty well in yeah, the first Yeah, I thought half. they hung tough. They're doing what they do. They're running that high-low post game. And... Uh, it's a physical game on, bo on both ends of the court. And, you know, LS is playing their game, sharing the ball. And off ran and contact, and he traveled. And that's a big call because that was a TiVo who stepped over to guard him. That would have been number three if that goes against the TiVo. Yeah. Now, what you, what you see right now is Elko has moved the TiVo to one of the perimeter positions. And they're playing Shuey and Williams in the high-low post. And Ativo's playing one of the perimeter positions. And that's going to get him some more face-up looks, maybe. And he will shoot the three, yeah. as he does here. See, and he drains that's it. exactly what we talked about right there. See, they put him on the perimeter. And now instead of in there banging all the time, he's just creating space. And then he'll shoot the ball from the perimeter. Perido, the other way, responds with a three of his own. Well, when you... When you make a three, the thing you don't want to do on defense is come back and give up a three. First points of the night for Perido as they go inside to Shuey. Cole Thomas with the head fake. Shuey. Atiba will fire another one, and that one's in and out. And Perido had the positioning for the rebound. They save it right into the hands of Perido, who's on the ground. And he's going to get called for the travel again. So Elko's going to get it right back with 6.08 to go in the quarter. See, what Elko's doing now, Coach Connors has put William and Shuey in the post, Ativo on the perimeter, and now the, the help side is they actually were helping off Ativo a little bit, and he got two open shots. Shuey finds George. Williams in the corner. Williams has been relatively quiet tonight, does not have a point. Second leading scorer on this team at 12 a game. Thomas the lob inside to Shuey. Quick catch and shoot off the glass. No, Vranick again the yeah, rebound. And yeah. we're going to get a foul called on Reese Shuey, his second. That'll be the first on either side here in the second half. Ten-point margin for LS as they try to extend it here with 5.40 to go in the quarter. Five-out offense for LS. Lots of cuts, some down screens. They will eventually get a ball screen out there for Burton at some point. Parado finds Wagner. Wart. And you know they're going to be watching Wart like yep. a hawk. They, they definitely were this possession. Parado open three. Just behind the line, he drains another one. And then, now here's another guy stepping up, making threes, okay? The focus was on Burton and... And Wirt, and Peridot hits the three. By the way, Burton, 
Only five points, and all of them came in the first quarter. He's had a quiet night, and LS is still up by 13. Nice feed inside, and Chewy can't, or that's Williams, rather, can't connect, and Vranick's there to tie him up. Yep. So Arrow's going to favor Elko. Yeah, LS, Elko's gotten the ball into the post the last two possessions, and they missed them. Not, they were not easy shots. They were definitely highly contested, but also shots that they feel they can make. Tebow off the inbound, trying to cut this into, keep it within around 10. They can do that with a three. Elko still running the patient offense. Shuey inside yeah. off the glass, and he'll shoot two. Okay, so Shuey that time did a nice job of sealing his man. The ball went from the wing to the top, and they entered the ball to the post from the top, and he drops step for the, for the shot. He got fouled, and to see if he can make two now. Chewy does make the first. But Elko forces you to, are you going to play behind? Are you going to, if you're going to play behind, they're going to throw the ball in there. If you're going to front, they're going to keep working to try to get that angle to get the ball in there. Brannick another rebound. All the way past the Tivo, and he lays it up and in. Just smooth operator coming down the court. Ten points he, for he, Brannick. He, he's the definition of a point forward. Good feed inside to Williams, out to a Tebow in the corner, and he kisses the rim on that one. Wagner the rebound. Strip, nice job by Dallas George yeah. to strip him. Nice job by George to come over there and make a big defensive play because I think LS was going to get a fast break layup. Dallas George looks okay. He hit the deck there. Elko ball. With 4-12 to go, I feel like we've lived on this side of the court in the second half, but... It's still 41-27. Yeah, and, and what LS is doing is they're just adding to their lead as, it, as time goes on. It hasn't been a real big run. It's just been taking care of business each possession. Thomas was open for a moment, feeds George in and out on the three. Vranek another rebound. Behind the back, lost the handle. It's loose. It was tipped, and they're going to say actually over and back, not tipped by Elko. Ed Berryman wants an explanation. I don't think they're going to – nobody had a good no, angle to really no. see if it was tipped or not. Yeah, nobody's going to overrule that as we'll get Cam Marquette into the game for Elko. Well, actually going to tell him to stay on the sidelines for a moment. Green by Williams, there goes George. Find Shuey, open three-pointer on the way. No, tipped out of there by Vranek, right back to Shuey. Feeds underneath to Williams, finally yep. he had a good look and he yep. couldn't connect. But Luke Williams will go to the line to nice, shoot a pair. Nice dish by Shuey. 3.30 to go in the quarter. 41-27, 14-point lead for LS as Williams will try to dig into that. Yeah, Elko does a nice job. That was a really sophisticated offensive set that time. They had all kinds of screens. Ended up with a nice ball screen. Second one by Williams is good. 41-29 LS with 3.24 to go in the third. Wagner. Off balance, tipped by Vranek. Vranek battling with yep. Shuey, but Shuey wins that one. Almost got his sixth offensive rebound. Feeds inside to Williams, and Vranek steals it. Vranek two on one, is stripped yep. by George and foul. It's going to be the second foul on Elko in the quarter and the first on Dallas George. Yep. Just, just think how valuable Vranek is to, to LS. He just does so many things for that team. Handles the ball, plays defense, gets rebounds. Not the biggest guy either, but he really plays bigger than what he looks. Oh, absolutely, and he really has great timing and instincts on getting the rebounds. Burton puts it on the floor. Top of the key, it's Perido. Now Ward open, look for three. Got another one. 
Ben Wart's got 18 points on six three-pointers tonight, and it's 44-29 LS. And that's a pure, that's a pure stroke. And he was open that time, but he wasn't that much. I mean, he wasn't wide open. No, there was a there guy was, on him. Right. There, that window closed pretty quick. Feet inside. Cutting through the lane is Williams. Reverse layup, no good. Wanted a foul. And we got a technical foul called yeah. on Elko. It's going to be yeah. on Williams, I believe. If he comes up the floor, it is. That's his third. On Elko, it's going to be on Williams, I believe. He comes up the floor. He didn't. Terry Farrell did not appreciate that. Burton, who we just mentioned a minute ago, only has five, and they all came in the first quarter, gets his sixth point of the night. Chase Smucker is set to check in for LS, as will Tim Holmes. And they will let them sub in. Berkeley Wagner and Ben Work going to yep. get a breather, as is Luke Williams for Elko. Burton gets both. Yep. And I think Coach Brad Connors just wants an explanation on why the, why the technical. But he was, he's not going to get it. He's not going to get the explanation. It's, it's Cam Marquette back in for Elko. Burton with 2.16 to go in the quarter. Brannick on the drive, turns, blocked by Ativo, yep. stayed right with him. Yep. Nice block by Ativo. Shuey one on three, goes to the bucket, reverse layup, no, gets his own rebound, kicks it out. George, back door to Shuey, cross the way to Thomas, open three on the way is good. Good job by Elko that time. I mean, that's a determined possession right there, wasn't it? Very determined to find a to score on that one. 46-32, LS in front. 153 to go in the third, and LS continues to control this game. We remind you that tonight's game is brought to you by Hearts Physical Therapy, a locally owned and independent outpatient physical therapy clinic with five convenient locations in Lancaster County. They specialize in orthopedic rehabilitation, aquatic therapy, post-surgery, sports injuries, and vestibular therapy. Unparalleled patient outcomes and an average net promoter score of 95 reflect their unwavering commitment to their patients. It's your choice where to go for physical therapy. Experience the difference that Hearts Physical Therapy can make in your recovery. And a reminder, our next game is next Friday night. It's Garden Spot Cacalico. We'll be down at the spot for that game. Then we come back up towards the eastern side of Lebanon County. We'll be at Cedar Crest when they take on McCaskey on February 4th. And then we got a little bit of a break, and then the LL tournament begins on Valentine's Day night. Neutral sites, full tournament this year. Thankfully, we're back to full tournaments as we'll have section winners and section runner-ups. And by the way, Coach and I were talking about this before the game tonight, the only way the two undefeated teams in LL right now, Columbia and LS, can meet would be in the finals. And oh my goodness, who does not want to see that happen? Both undefeated, both going for an LL title. That would be unbelievable in a couple of weeks. But long, long way to go. And there's uh, and, and tons there's of teams in the way. So many good teams yep. that are capable this year. We did double check that, though, just out of curiosity tonight before the game. Burton pull up short. Vranick the rebound again. Pumps yep. and gets the roll and the bucket and the foul. He just gets so many offensive rebounds. Unbelievable. 16-point lead for LS as Williams is going to come back in for a Tebow. And that's a Tebow's third. He has played really well with the two fouls. Yep, he has done a great job. And, you know, I'm, really, I'm impressed with Elko. I mean, they run their stuff. They do a good job running their stuff. And uh, tonight they're, they're just playing a really good team in LS. LS is a very good team. But I, Elko, they, they, they've done a nice job. I believe they assessed a warning to Brad Connors for the coach's box. It was just a, a step or two outside of it. That might be a little nitpicky if you ask me, but I'm up here, they're down there as they feed inside to Shuey. Shuey through traffic, tons of contact again, no call. Williams off balance, he got it. Yeah. 
And again, that was a very determined possession by Elko. It wasn't pretty, but they got the end result. Strong move by Luke Williams. Very strong move. Cuts it down to 14 as Holmes will pick up the foul. That's the fourth on LS here in the half as Williams makes the free throw. He's a perfect three for three tonight from the line. All of them coming here in the quarter as we got 60 seconds to go in the quarter. It's a 13 point lead for LS. Schmucker passed up the three and drives. Got the roll. What a play by Schmucker. He is a good looking young player. Forty-four seconds to go in the third. Williams, Chewy drives good yep. reversal, and he is fouled. Yep. And and Chewy and Williams have really been determined the last couple minutes of getting getting to the basket and finishing. So Chewy will get two. He's made his only attempt here tonight and misses the first. Ben Wart is back in the game for Tim Holmes. This is a, a quality Elko team that LS is beating right now by 15, I mind you. As Williams gets the rebound and puts it back in. He's starting to heat up here in this third quarter. It's just determination. Flat out determination. Cuts it down to 13 with 22 seconds to go. Ty Burton averaging 21 a game tonight, and he has seven, and they're still doing this kind of damage well, to a quality that's team. The to and, and, and Ty's okay with the whole thing because the other guys are doing a great job, and he's playing a good game, just not scoring a whole lot. Wart's open again for three, and the heat it? check that time is yep. off the mark. Yep. As they got to hustle to get it up. Shuey throws yep. one up, and that is over the backboard. So we go to the fourth quarter, and this one won't quite say it's academic just yet, but LS has a 13-point lead. Tonight's game is brought to you by Hannah Spira. State Farm Insurance, located in Lebanon County, our mission is to enhance the quality of life for others through the offering of insurance and financial services products and providing outstanding customer service to show our appreciation to them. Call Hannah for quotes at 717-274-3822. Alongside Warren Goodley and Eric Thomas with you here tonight as we are at LS High School and we have an LS lead right now of 13. And Elko, they're just hanging in there, aren't they? They're not giving up. They've had to play through some foul trouble and some couple calls that, you know, that didn't go their way, so... And they had to play through some hot shooting of the Pioneers in the first half. Ben Wart, if you missed it, 18 points tonight. And all of them coming by way of the three-pointer. Yeah, some of them have been on set, a couple on set plays, but most of them have been just to his teammates finding him when he's out there open. Smucker for three, no. Rebound tapped by Williams into the hands of George. Shuey, good bounce pass underneath to Ativo, but he is fouled. Perdo will pick that one up. That's his second. That'll be the fifth on LS. I beg your pardon, the sixth on LS here in the second half. Berkeley Wagner is back in. Yeah, nice minutes by uh, Chase Smucker. Ativo. Chewy bounce pass. George. They move the ball so well to Zalco. Yep, this is a little bit of a little bit of a open offense where they get some dribble drive, handoffs, a little different look than what they've done earlier in this. In the, in the game. Catch and shoot, Thomas on the way, no, rebound Burton. Ty scrambling the other way, had it stripped, yep. and it's gonna stay with LS. Good defensive play to get their hands on that one. Yeah. 
Open three by Perdo. Yep. Drains yes. another. Who was who had the assist? Branich. Does it all. It's the third three by Perdo. He's got nine. All of that coming in the second half. Williams open for three. Got that one. Yep. Well, Luke Williams has had himself a strong second half. All ten of his points here in the third and fourth quarter. His team still trails by 13. Perido open again. Why not? In and out. Rebound to Tivo. Uh, solid defense by Burton. Just yeah. George ran into a wall, and yeah. Burton's going to be called for the foul. Yeah, good, good job by George just maintaining his composure after the first bump and then keeping his balance to, 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 to change directions. George can't hit the first as Atibo had his hands on it with 6.29 to go. You know, that, that's the other thing here is this game now becomes about extending it as much as you possibly can if you're Elko. Right, and if they hit a bucket here. You start thinking about that now because you're down 13 with 6.25 to go. George drives, good take, tipped around, a Tivo. He tried to throw it out of there. Burton ahead of the pack. Burton yep. lays it up Just and in. Too fast. Uh, assist by Branich. Thomas again will hand it off to Williams. Shuey. George again. They work penetration. Again, they, they just they move the ball so well, yep. does Elko, as Williams yep. misses everything on that three-point attempt. Yep, this is a little bit of a dribble drive offense right now. Instead of trying to pound it into the post, they're just spreading the floor a little bit. Marquette is back in for Elko. He'll take the place of Thomas. Cole Thomas tonight has six. Marquette has played a bunch, but he has not scored yet. 5.50 to go from LS High School. Trying to stay undefeated. They're looking to go 14 and 0 and remain the only undefeated team ex aside from Columbia in LL play. It's Perido. Yep. Very hard to do getting this deep in the season. And Burton, oh, he hit the deck hard. But he looks okay. Little Gimpy getting up, and he'll have to collect himself here with 5.34 to go. That's a Tebow's fourth, by the way. You know, the, the undefeated thing, we saw Olsh do that in the state final last year at the 2A level. Remember that game? Obviously, I know you do. Yep. But it's it, to me, the undefeated thing is such a, as Burton hits the, the first, it, it's so dangerous <laughs> when you get to a certain point of the season because you, you're going to hit that point of the season where you cannot lose under any circumstance. And then the question becomes, how do you respond in those situations? Well, you know, I almost think it's sometimes better, like, if you are, like, a 13-0 or 15-0, you lose a game, you get a little refocused, you come back, right. you clean house the rest of the way. But there's not one coach when he's 4 15 0 15 0 wants to go lose exactly. a game. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, and that's the catch-22 It's like, with it. you, okay, you win this game, you say, oh, geez, where are we going to lose one? Well, let's not lose any. Let's just win them all. Take it one day at a time. The LL standings right now, I mean, Section 1 is still up for grabs. Cedar Crest and Hempfield uh, are in a virtual tie for the top spot. Manheim Township and McCaskey still lurking. Penn Manor are pretty much out of the mix right now. Warwick's got a lead over Lebanon in Section 2. Lebanon's got some games to make up. E-Town still in the mix at 4-3. and three. They are still very much alive. And they have a couple of those games in front of them. LS right now just has a complete control over Section 3 at 8-0. Elko with a two-game lead on Catholic in Section 4. And then Columbia with a one-game lead on Mennonite in Section 5. Those two teams will meet again. But remember, as Wagner steals that one, Columbia, we saw them last Friday yeah. defeat Mennonite. So they've already got the one-game lead on them. Vranek with 5-13 to go. And those two teams will meet later in the year. But Columbia gets to that point. And they got a chance to put the section away. They ain't losing a game, I don't think. I, I truly believe that they might be the team you don't want to see in the upcoming LL tournament. Uh, they're a scary team because they just played relentless defense. 
Yeah, I said to you last week, it's it really is like watching the old school Loyola Marymount. You know, they just they got on the floor and they would not let you up for air. And that's exactly what Columbia does. They picked up a big, big win over Berlin Brothers Valley on Saturday down at Chambersburg as Marquette steps in front of that one. Nice fine with Shuey who lays it in. Nice left finish. Nice pass by Marquette. Still 15-point lead with 4.24 to play. LL Tournament is going to be a lot of fun this season. Yeah. And the race to get to some of those, not just the top spots, but the race to get to the second place is going to be fun too down the stretch as Wagner hits the open jumper. Well, right. that's a nice move by Wagner when the medium jump shot. Four minutes to go. It's a 17-point advantage for the home team. And, and LS now is spreading the floor, and, and Coach Berryman is saying, yeah, take a shot if you have a good one. But if you don't, let's just work the ball, and that's what they're doing. Williams spins, and they won't give him. Call that on the floor, I yeah, think. Yeah, they did call that on the floor, it looks like. Yeah, I the, the race for second place in some of these sections is going to be interesting because – Take, for instance, section four. You've got Catholic, who is at four and three. Well, Donegal's three and four, and Octorera's three and five. Those two teams are still very much alive oh, yeah. to get that second place. Yes. In section three, you've got Garden Spot at four and three, and Central, Mannheim Central at four and two, as the free throw missed. And look at the Tebow battling to keep that alive. So you got that race. E-Town, Lebanon, and Warwick throw a dart, figure out which one of those two are going to make it. That's three good teams. That's <laughs> three really good teams. And we may not have seen the best basketball out of E-Town yet. They just continue to figure out ways to win games. Yeah, they're just getting better and better. And then you got Hempfield, Cedarcrest, Township, and McCaskey are all battling, too, in Section 1. And all four of those are still very much alive to win this section. As Wart drives in, at least record-wise, they're alive right. to win. There might yeah. be, when you watch them, you might think that one's a little ahead of the others, but... Who knows? But the race for second place is going to be a lot of fun, too. We may actually get playoffs for the section and then maybe a playoff for the second place team, too. You never know. I mean, that would be possible, well, wouldn't oh it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, not a playoff for second. For they'll, second. They'll just they'll figure that they'll out. They'll figure that out with yeah. tiebreakers. But if it's a tie for first place, they'll have a playoff for the section champ. Could get a playoff for the playoff. Yeah. That'd be fun. Free throw is made there and LS continues to roll 61-42 at this point with 3.03 to go. Boyer is back in for Elko. He'll take the place of a Tivo. Smucker, Vranick, Wagner, Perido, and Wirt on the floor for the Pioneers. It is Boyer, Shuey, George, Marquette, and Williams for Elko. Wirt, well, we thought about it. Oh, nice pass, huh? Oh, what a find underneath the Smucker. Couldn't hit the layup. Battling underneath. Gets his own board. Feeds Vranick. Vranick is stripped. Keeps it alive. They go to the floor. Smucker races to the floor. Wagner keeps the dribble alive. Gets it over to Perno for three. <laughs> I was going to say, if they hit a three oh, off of that goodness. scramble, you just felt that that three was going to go in after that. Smucker races to the floor. Wagner keeps the dribble alive. Gets it over to Perno for three. <laughs> I was going to say, if they hit a three oh, off that goodness. scramble. Ninth team foul on LS, so Elko as Williams hits. Yeah, Elko, they have a lot of, they have a bright future ahead here this season yet. They're in, in, they're in control. They're on top of Section 4. They're going to be in district playoffs. They're going to be in probably going to be in the, they'll be in the league playoffs. So they got a lot of good basketball to play yet, and they have a nice team. 2.27 to go as we play out the string. Uh, it would be easy tonight to, as Ward's going to drive and lay it up and in. By the way, he can score two-pointers, too. Yeah, he's he's just a very patient player. Let's the game come to him, and when it comes there, he takes advantage of it. 
I think it would be easy tonight to look at the book and decide that as Shuey drains the three. That Wart was a big difference for this team, but with 154 to go in this game, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that the player of the game tonight is going to be Luka Vranek. Yeah, I, I, I agree 100%. On senior night, number one is the number one star in this game. Just as, does so many things oh. to help your team win. It's unbelievable. He handles the ball. He rebounds. He plays D. He'll score for you. Wart again. Another three for Ben Wart. 23 tonight, and he's hit seven yep. threes. Got to put that shooting hand on ice tonight. He heard me say that about Vranick, and now he's <laughs> mad. Vranick has played great, and so has Word. I mean, both of them are out, out of this world tonight. Tonight's game is brought to you by HL Team Sales. HL Team Sales provides uniforms, team shops, and other clothing equipment to schools and teams throughout the LL, York, and Berks regions. Contact HL at 717 392 3010 or online at www.hlteamsales.com. Big thanks to all of our sponsors tonight. Warwick is up big time in their game. A couple of scores that you got there tonight. McCaskey was up one at the half, Township was up five at the half. And now McCaskey is tied with E Town, four minutes to go. So there's that pesky E Town team. Yep. Two very good teams here tonight, and Elko never gave up, even though they were down a little bit. Wagner picks it off. Yeah. Wagner all the way, and he lays it in. Yeah. Ed Berryman's going to call a timeout to get some backups into the yeah. game. Hunter Hildebrand yeah. is going to come in. And it also looks like Dean Herr will step in as well, get yeah. some time, and Trent Wagner as well. Tonight's game brought to you by Spooky Nook Basketball, the leader for all your basketball needs, everything from tournaments, leagues, camps, and personal training. Looks tonight, crowded as always. Always love driving by and seeing that dome on the way down. A lot going on in Spooky Nook. I really wish we could somehow finagle district finals into that building. I think that would be a lot of fun if they would work that out as that jumper is missed. Aiden Frisch is in the game for Elko with under a minute to go. So we're seeing a lot of the backups now. Her, Hunter Hildebrand, and her with 31 seconds to go. And the jumper on the way by Wagner is no good. 5'10 sophomore getting off the shot with 25 seconds to play. 21 point lead for LS. They're going to go and stay undefeated, I should say, at 14 0. Elko, no shame. They're going to fall to 10-4, and four, but a lot still in front of the Raiders in their section. They'll have a clash coming up at the end of the season, the last game of the season with Lancaster Catholic, which could decide the section. So essentially we are going to get a playoff game there. If right. somewhere along the line Catholic can get those two games back, then we will have a playoff for that section title essentially a playoff on the last night of the regular season. Yep. Brad and Connor certainly has his team position for the districts as well. As Smucker gets that rebound. And Herb will bring it across half court, and LS is going to win this thing tonight. Yeah, really, really good effort by LS. But like I said, I keep saying Elko, they did some good things, and this was a good game for them to play. Her nails the three with... Time winding down, and Elko will try to get one final shot off. Marquette with one second, stops and pops, and he drains it. Count it. For yep. his first bucket of the night, but it is too much of LS tonight as they defeat Elko 71-49 to in a section crossover matchup here tonight as uh, they remain undefeated at 14-0. It's impressive, impressive 14-0. Impressive tonight was just the way they went about their business. Uh, played great defense, moved the ball on offense. Everybody contributed, and, and Burton just did a great job of playing his game. He didn't score 25 points or anything, but his overall game was good, and 
Vranick was just incredible tonight, his all-around game. Yeah, Vranick's going to be our player of the game tonight. How about the shooting? <laughs> well, I mean, Wirt was certainly the difference maker in the game tonight in the first half. I mean, they all the threes, and then he comes back and he makes a couple in the third quarter as well. But, I mean, Vranick with the offensive rebounding, the, on playing defense and coming up with passes and a couple of assists and – you know, just an all-around game for him tonight was spectacular for this team and certainly plays bigger than his size. Yeah, he's – and, you know, the impressive thing is when he gets a defensive rebound, he's not afraid to just dribble the ball right out and lead the fast break. And he's going to find somebody on the end of that fast break. But just a great game by, by LS tonight because like, they were going to be tested tonight and, and they responded. Looks like we're going to get Eddie Berryman up here as well as Luka Vranek will – Join us here tonight on the post-game show. And we'll have him slide on in here and give us a couple of words tonight. Yep. Luca, congratulations, man. Thank you. What an effort tonight. I'm going to ask you first because Ben Wirt obviously is going to be the guy in the book, but your yeah. game tonight, I mean, you, offensive rebounds. Defense, a couple of passes here and there. You did get some buckets, obviously. You finished with 12 points. But talk to me a little bit about your overall game. I mean, you're, you got two guys who can score, and then you just kind of clean up everything else. And that, that really you really fit into that role nicely. Yeah, we knew they were big, sort of like the opposite of we are. We like to run out and gun. We got four shooters in the starting lineup. And they, uh, but, like, we knew we had to lock in on the defensive end, box out, grab some big boards. Williams and Tiva, they're big, but – I think we did a good job. You guys are not – you don't see a lot of size like a Tivo. So yeah. what, what, how difficult was he to try to defend against tonight? What did you guys have to do to him to try to limit him in, early in this game? Uh, we just wanted to get up on the guy so they couldn't make a good pass inside, try to front as best as we could. He's big body in there. And then backside help as much as we can. How good did it feel, obviously, the senior night to get honored here, but you guys still stay undefeated at 14-0. That's – you know, are you – I, I mean, I got to ask you, are you thinking about it here a little bit? Do you like, you know, you like this undefeated record and this yeah. run that you guys are on right now? I mean, we know targets on our back. Everyone's going to try to come for us, and, like, we love it. We just got to lock in, keep going, and on to the next one mentality. Great game tonight. Thank you. Congratulations. Good all-around effort. Luke Vranek tonight finished with 12 points. I think we're going to get Ed Berryman over here for some comments. He's talking to Coach right now. You know how those coaches go when they get together, and we will get Ed Berryman over here, sir. There you go. Congratulations on a nice win tonight. Thank you. That was impressive. I want to ask you first about the gentleman that just talked to us, Luca Vranek. Mike, yes. I mean, we, we were saying this the whole second half. Ben Ward has the statistical night. Luca just does everything else you need him to do. Yeah, Luca does a tremendous job. He's a great passer. Um, he finds his teammates whenever they're open, and when he, we need him, he'll get to the rim. And he plays great defense for us, so he's a very good player. He really plays bigger than his size. He does. You're right. He's long. He's long, so that helped on some of those rebounds against the big guy inside. Ativo, you don't see a lot of size like that, but your, your guys, especially Ben, that was a, a big-time Saturday night's main event in the paint there with him and Ativo yeah, yeah. for a while. <laughs> Early on, Ben, yeah, they were, they were battling. So, yeah, that's what it's all about. How do you feel about your team right now? I mean, you're 14-0, and you're, you're in control of your section, you're halfway through this thing. You don't want to get too far ahead of yourself. Your no. schedule gets a little bit tougher. Octorero is going to be a, a tough out for you. You have a couple of other games. Uh, coming up on your schedule, and then you got Catholic. I'm sorry, you got uh, McDevitt, yeah, got you got Muhlenberg, Central again, E Town right. again. I e mean, so the, the schedule gets tougher, but you, oh, absolutely. How do you like where you're at right now? Yeah, I love where we're at, and we, you know, we want to play, you know, real good competition, and we've got good competition coming up in our section and, and outside our section, all in the LL League. So we're excited about that. 71 points tonight, and Ty gets 11, and really did not do anything to force anything, and just mm -hmm. kind of played within the structure of the game out there. You can do that kind of damage when he's not scoring. Is, is oh, absolutely, impressive. yeah. And I think we've had three or four games this year where he's had maybe eight, nine, ten points, and we've scored close to 70 or more in each one of those games. So. Ty wants to win. Ty's a winner. That's what he plays. And the teammates all, you know, they all respect each other. They like each other. They're all friends. And they, they, their goal is to win. All so it right. doesn't matter who gets, the, who gets the points. Congratulations to you tonight on a big win. Appreciate it. 14 Thank you. 14-0, Ed Berryman, the head coach of LS. They're victorious here tonight, 71-49 to over Elko. Let's run down the final scoring numbers for you here quickly. Elko tonight led by Luke Williams, who had 12. All of them come in the second half. Reese Shuey had 10. Corey Ativo had 9. Dallas George, 7. Six for Cole Thomas, three for Cody Boyer, and two for Cam Marquette. For LS tonight, Ben Wirt, 23 points. He was sensational. 
hit uh, tonight seven three-pointers in this one, six of them coming in the first three quarters. He had 15 at the half. He had all five threes in the uh, first half there to really help this team extend. Vranick, you heard from 12 points tonight, numerous rebounds, worked on a double-double in this game as well. Ty Burton, 11. You got nine for uh, Isaiah Perido, seven for Berkeley Wagner, two for Chase Smucker, three for Dean Hurd, two for Luke Hines, and that rounds out the scoring. That's going to round out our Friday night here at LS. A big win for the Pioneers tonight, 71-49. to We're back on the air next Friday night as we will travel down to Garden Spot as they will take on Cocalico in another showdown. And then we got one more regular season game after that at Cedar Crest and McCaskey, and then it's on to the LL Tournament. We enjoyed this one for you here tonight. And uh, we will talk to you next Friday night. Enjoy your weekend. We'll see you at Garden Spot a week from tonight. Final score for the final time. LS wins it tonight, 71-49. to You've been watching live coverage of LL Hoops on LLHoops.com. Have- Thank you.